so this what I also want to talk about tonight were, were just some different types of things that you could be doing. Again, I'm trying to give you practical information that you can apply in your day to day life. And so if we ask, I said earlier that one of the things that this drug does is it disrupts viral hijacking. And and so I'm going to I'm going to make some room on the board here. How does it disrupt viral hijacking? Um, so one of the ways that it's suspected that this drug blocks viral hijacking, I'm going to put up a slide, a research slide for you here on the screen, is that it is known as a zinc ionophore. Now, what is a zinc ionophore? A, a zinc ionophore means that this drug binds to zinc. Okay, so we'll just use HC. Um, Q as our example, and we'll make zinc here. And so they it binds to that zinc and it pushes it into the cell. And then once it pushes it into the cell, it can push it into uh, the cellular machinery, the Golgi apparatus, the, the other places in the cell like uh, mitochondria, etc. It can push that zinc into those compartments in the cell where DNA and RNA replication can occur, which is where generally the virus likes to get to that component so that it can take over. And so as an ionophore, it pulls zinc into the cell. So generally speaking, zinc, there are receptors on the surface of the cell and receptors on the surface of the organelles in the cell that are zinc dependent. So the zinc passes through these receptors um, and, and it's like a, a, a door that opens and closes. And so but what hydroxychloroquine does is it binds and it pulls it through into the cell and concentrates it into those areas of the cell. And so knowing that these medicines can do that, I want to talk a little bit about zinc tonight, moving on to that next slide, um, and show you that uh, zinc, as, a, as its role in, in playing a role as an antiviral and all the different things that it has the capacity to do. So Again, I got another slide up here on the screen for you. You can see here an abundance of evidence has accumulated over the past 50 years to demonstrate the antiviral activity of zinc against a variety of viruses and via numerous mechanisms. Now, uh, this was just recently published. This was a review of the literature. This was just published in 2019, just a few months ago. If we go, I want to I want to pull up some of the uh, some of the slides from this actual study especially I've got a nice image for you because I want to show you where zinc plays a role in inhibiting viral replication. It actually plays multiple roles in this process. And there are a number of research studies that demonstrate in vitro in humans. Um, and, and, and again, these aren't test tube studies. These are actually studies on zinc and its role, the role that it plays in humans in active trials that uh, show zinc actually is very effective against a number of different types of viruses. So as you're looking at this, you know, just to kind of go through it, you can see human clinical studies using zinc as an antiviral therapy, and that zinc for herpes simplex has been shown to reduce viral load. It's been shown to uh, reduce the duration and severity of the outbreak, and also to reduce the recurrence of an outbreak. You can see with the rhinovirus, zinc reduces the duration of illness, reduces symptom severity, frequency, and duration, um, reduces the, um, the severity of the symptoms itself. You can see that with viral warts, which is another type of viral infection, that zinc leads to improved clearance of warts. And uh, you can see with, uh, with uh, papilloma, papillomatosis that zinc reduces the infection, increases the CD4 T cell counts, which is part of your immune system and helps your immune system fight. You can see with diseases like chronic hepatitis that zinc has been shown to reduce the markers for liver damage um, associated with that hepatitis. And you can see that zinc has also led to an enhanced response to treatments that are being used in chronic hepatitis. So zinc has a long track record in human trials. Now, now if we're talking about some of the mechanisms of how zinc actually works, I want to show you another diagram that I think is important uh, because it illustrates where zinc has a function or plays a role and has a function. So if you look at this diagram here, you can see that zinc interferes with the viral replication cycle to include virus inactivation, the inhibition of viral uncoding, the viral genome transcription component, as well as 
viral protein translation and polyprotein processing. So zinc is known to block viral replication at four different locations using four different mechanisms. So now knowing all of that about zinc, let's back up to the board here and go back to what we know about hydroxychloroquine, which is hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine as medications are known zinc ionophores, meaning they concentrate zinc in areas of the cell where zinc can then be effective at doing the potential work of viral replication and inhibition. So, or an inhibiting viral replication through multiple different mechanisms of action. So aside from those things, so, so again, I said earlier that the mechanism of action here was that these medicines potentially get zinc to the areas where zinc can then work its magic. So the next logical question would be, if hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine have known toxicity effects, what can we do um, that isn't going to create a toxicity effect that might also improve zinc getting having access into the cell? So, Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.